Hey everybody, Dr. Chris here, and today I'm just going to talk about some knee strengthening exercises that you can do at home. So when we're talking about knee health, there are a few important concepts. One, you need to make sure that you have a full range of motion at the knee, and that includes both full extension and full flexion. Number two, you want to make sure that you can apply or maintain strength throughout that whole range of motion. And finally, you want to make sure that you can track the knee appropriately throughout the full range of motion. It does no good to have a full range of motion and have strength if your knee doesn't actually go where it's supposed to. So we're going to look at three exercises that you can do at home that will help to address each of those points. So in my mind, achieving full extension of the knee is the most important thing. So we're going to look at that exercise first. And to do that, we're going to do the Jefferson Curl. This is an exercise that you're going to do from uh, an elevated platform. And if you have stairs at home, this is something that you can do on the stairs. If you don't have stairs, then you can put um, something down on the floor that you can stand on, either some plates or a stool, but make sure that it's something sturdy and something safe that's not going to move when you do the exercise. When you set up for this, you want to put your toes right to the edge of the stairs. And for this exercise, even though when we tell people to bend down, we want them to have a neutral spine, for this exercise, you're actually going to curl your spine. We want to make sure that we keep the legs locked to the back as much as we can. If you're having trouble with your hamstring flexibility, it is okay to have a slight bend, but ideally we want to make sure that we have the legs in full extension. And what we're going to do with this exercise, we're going to curl our spine all the way down to the floor and then we're going to reverse that and curl all the way back up. And we want to make sure that we lead with our head when we're going down and then we lead with our back when we're coming up. So it's going to look something like this. And then hold for a second and then come all the way back up. Curling up your head as the final thing. If you're just new to this, you can do this without weight. But ideally, you want to be able to use weight and you want to be able to go further than the platform that you're standing on. So that will look something like this. I'll show you one more time. So that's the Jefferson Curl. The next exercise that we're going to do is an exercise that will help you to work on knee flexion or bending of the knee. So this is going to be the split squat. You can do the split squat on the floor on a level surface or you can do it on an elevated surface and I'll show you both versions. So first, you're going to stand like you're in a lunge position and you want to make sure that you have um, the, the knee over top of the outside aspect of your foot. And when we do this exercise, instead of dropping straight down the same way that we would do with the lunge, here we're going to try to drive the knee forward over the foot and we're trying to get our hamstring to touch the back of the heel. So instead of doing a lunge like this, we're actually going to go forward into this position and we're trying to get the hamstring to touch the heel that's on the floor. And while we're doing this, we want to make sure that we don't elevate the heel, but we keep the heel pressed to the floor. You may have to adjust the position of your back leg to make sure that you can, or to allow yourself the, the room that you need to do this, but we're trying to get this to touch that surface. And then as we come out of this, we want to drive the heel, or the mid portion of the foot, I should say, towards the floor to come out of this position and that would be one repetition. So you would do a number of repetitions, but with each we want to try to drive the knee forward as far as we can and at the bottom we're really trying to get this to touch this. 
and back up. Now, that's doing the split squat on the floor. You can also do this with the front leg elevated, which will help you to get into a deeper range of motion. And so, if you have, again, if you have stairs, you can do this on the staircase. If you don't have stairs, then you would use an elevated platform, such as some plates or a stool, or even a chair braced against the wall. You wanna make sure that whatever you're stepping on is not something that's gonna move. So if we're gonna do this here, you would put your foot up onto the um, stair, and it, it doesn't have to be the second stair, it could be the first stair, it could be the third stair, depending on how flexible you are and how tall you are. But we're gonna do the same thing that we did before, keep the heel flat, drive the knee over the foot as far as we can, try and keep the heel flat and touching right down to the bottom, and really trying to sink down as much as we can to get as much flexion through the knee as possible. Once you've come as far down as you can, then you're going to drive yourself back up, remembering to keep the knee over the outside edge of the foot. I'll show you one more rep. Come all the way down. And when we're here, we want to make sure that we keep our pelvis square, or in other words, directed towards the stairs. We don't want to open up our pelvis to either side. We want to keep the pelvis, we want to keep the pelvis directed right towards the front. And again, we're trying to drop down to get the hamstring to touch the heel as much as we can. And then when we come up, we want to drive the knee towards the outside edge of the foot and drive the foot through the floor. So that's the split squat, and that's Teddy. So if you're having trouble with balance, you can use the stair of the balustrade to help yourself while you go into that split squat position. But again, same things hold true. Try to keep the knee over the outside edge, heel stays flat, and then try to bring the hamstring down to the calf. As you come back up, keep the knee over the outside edge, using the post for balance, and back up into the starting position. So the final thing that we need to do is to do an exercise that's gonna help with tracking of the patella while you go through your range of motion of the knee. And so for this, one of my favorite exercises is the shrimp squat. And this is basically a single leg squat. So depending on your level of experience, you can do this as an entirely freestanding option, or if you need some help with balance, you can use a post, or if you're not strong enough to do the whole squat, then you can do it to a target. So here I'm gonna demonstrate the squat, the shrimp squat to the target. And basically what, what we'd like to do um, whichever foot you're going to work on, you're going to place that beside your target and you're going to make sure that you have a nice active foot, so squeezing the toes towards the heel, a nice active foot. As we go into the squat position, we want to make sure that the knee tracks over the outside edge of the foot and then we're basically going to come down to the target, touch and back up down to the target, and back up. As you get stronger, you can place the target closer to the floor, until you can come right down to the floor. The whole time we want to make sure as we do that squat movement that the knee stays over the outside edge of the foot. So when you look down at the foot as you're doing this movement, you should be able to see your big toe on the inside of your knee. If your kneecap blocks your toes when you're looking down, then you really need to work to engage your glutes to rotate that leg out and drive it over the outside edge of the toes. So let's try that one more time to make sure that that happens.
And there you have it, three exercises that you can do at home to help strengthen your knees.